with the internet, you know, the last couple of years, newsletters, hotlines, everybody has different versions of what happened with you and Paulo Windorf in the locker room. What, you know, what, uh, what did happen that night between you? You know, it, it just, uh, everyone, uh, you know, TV days are hectic and they're long and, uh, um, you know, I'm not gonna elaborate on this a whole lot, but okay. bottom line is Eric called me at my hotel, and because I had missed three, three or four um, uh, photograph sessions, mm -hmm. where I mean the photographer cam was there, set up, his assistant was there, set up, waiting for me, yeah, and I just didn't show up, and um, so he called me and said, Leon, if you're not there, I'm gonna find you, you know. Yeah. $5,000 if you don't show up today. And um, so, um, you know, Paul had no knowledge of this, and, and how could he, right? Unless unless somebody would have called over, Jamie Engel or somebody, one of Eric's assistants, would have called over and told them that uh, 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 that was the case. Yeah. So, so it, it's impossible for me to be two places at one time. So. Yeah. Eric said, look, man, you have to do this photo shoot. And, but at the same time, I was scheduled to do pre-tapes. Yeah. And Paul was uh, uh, kind of, uh, I, I, I don't want to belittle him, but I guess he was kind of like an assistant, like a gopher, you know, go yeah. get this guy and make sure he's ready for um, uh, pre-tapes, make sure he's dressed and ready to go and he's next at that time. And go get this guy and, you know, go get this and go do this. And he was... He was acting as an, uh, an assistant, uh, All right? Whatever, an assistant, assistant, you know, doing doing assistant type things, you know. He wasn't acting in, in, a, in a booker role, or and he, he certainly wasn't my my uh, superior. <laughs> um, but uh, so when I walked in, and, and and obviously, if you if you. Uh, uh, him not understanding that I was told by the boss to go do this this shoot. So I'm over there, you know, that that's hard work. I mean, yeah. you're sweaty, you're flexing, you're all, you're all oiled up and you're doing this stuff. And I dried off and I, I took a shower and put my stuff on and I, I walked in and well, I was tired, you know. And uh, I sat down and I, was sit, I sat down next to me and Megan and I were talking. And um, Paul walked in and, and, and started screaming at me saying, um, you know, where in the hell have you been? You're late. You know we've got we've got people out here that want to take a lunch break. The, the meaning the television crewmen. Yeah. And I said I said Paul, first of all, man, don't yell at me. You're not my boss. And, and two, I was at a photo shoot, and one I was told I had to be at. I can't be at two places at once. All right. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know all he would have to say is okay look, i didn't understand can you please you know just take your shirt off put your mask on and go do a couple of interviews right yeah that's a, i mean that's simple as it would have been but you know um uh, the language got abusive from there you know yeah um, um and there, there, there again there was no rhyme or reason for it because again he wasn't my superior and and I was told by my superior, the superior, I mean, Eric, Eric Bischoff, to go do this photo shoot. Yeah. And, and I, again, I couldn't be in two places at once. And um, so um, we had a few words, and then and, and, uh, uh, he walked away and I said, well, you know, I'm going to go whatever, talk to somebody. And, and then Terry Taylor came over and said, hey, you know, and I explained to Terry, I said, Terry, I said, you know, he has no right to yell at me. And in fact, I, I was doing what I was told to do. I was, I was at a photo shoot yeah. for Eric because he called my hotel and told me to be there. And uh, he said, well, Leon, we didn't understand that. I apologize for Paul. And could you just take your shirt off and uh, uh, put your mask back on? Yeah. Put your mask on and go do this because they are waiting. I said, sure, Terry. So I took my shirt off. I was walking on my way out toward the deal, and Paul confronted me again. And uh, and this time he got got in my face, and uh, you know he was inches away from my face, and um, he was he was um, he was he was calling me out. He said, "Come yeah. on, you're supposed to be the big tough guy," you know. And he was I mean, he, he was extremely uh, agitated, very mad at me. 
because when he yelled at me, I, I, I treated him with total disrespect. Look, Paul, you're not my boss, and you're damn sure ain't going to yell at me and, and go screw yourself. Um, you know, so he was, he was upset. And, uh, um, I mean, um, I, I, I'm trying to, um, you know, uh, yeah, you're supposed to be so, be, you're supposed to be so tough, you know, go ahead, take your best shot. Go ahead. Yeah. Come on, tough guy, blah, 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 take your best shot. And you fat, so-and-so, bleep, 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 bleep. Yeah. You know, so after about, um, I don't know, about a minute of this, you know, I just, I just, I dropped my right hand and I slapped him right here in yeah. the face. And I hit him hard because I was upset, but it was an open hand slap. And when I did, I mean, the, the, the moment I hit him, I, I realized, uh, you know, that regardless of what he was saying, I mean, to, to hit somebody like that's wrong. And, yeah. And at that moment, my job was in jeopardy. You know, if I would have broke this guy's jaw, he falls back, hits his head, I mean, they, they would have every right to fire me. And see, at, at that moment, no matter, no matter what he said to me, no matter how he was treating me, you know, you, yeah. In today's society, you you cannot put your hand on somebody. Yeah. And um, um, so when I did that, I mean, I was like, I froze. And I thought, oh my God, there goes my house, you know, my, my my kids' college education, because I had a, I had a long term deal with them for a lot of money, and uh, I certainly wanted to, wanted to try to preserve that. And and uh, um, his feet, I mean, they hit slapped him, you know, um, hard his feet virtually came up over his head. And when he, he came down, he came down head first, you know, you know, on the back of his head. And and in this hallway, the WC, uh, the WCW, it was, it was well lit. And there was a box over there that people sat on, an old wood box. Yeah. You know, sat on. And I mean, his head missed a corner of that thing by, by inches. And I thought, oh, you know, if he's head hit that, you know, he's he's dead or seriously yeah. injured. And I remember when I, I walked over, I put my hand on his shoulder and went, you know, Paul, are you all right? And boy, he slapped his hand away and was getting to fight. And I said, boy, he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, he's a tough guy. He took the slap. I, I give him that. But I backed up against the wall and I put my hands down my side. And I said, I'm not, and I'm not. I, you know, to myself, I said, I'm not going to throw another punch. I said, you know, I'll be lucky if I don't get fired for slapping him. And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, he, my hands down, I mean, I say, I saw him come, you know, he got up and he came across and I tried to move with it, but he caught me in the lip and cut my lip and I had my hands down on my side and he caught me again and boom, it caught me again the third time. And, uh, uh, he went for the fourth time and I blocked it and I said, like, you know, I can't take Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So I just blocked it and I just got him in the front face lock. You know? Yeah. I was probably a hundred pounds heavier than him and a lot stronger and him having, you know, he's really crippled in one arm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, had I really wanted to, to, to fight or hurt this man, uh, he'd have never got, he'd have never got up. With my weight advantage and when I slapped him, I just would have laid on him and, really did what I wanted to do. Yeah. I, I surely wouldn't slap him and then let him get up. Yeah. You know, and, uh, uh, you know, on my son's soul, that, that's the truth of what happened there. Yeah. And uh, then, uh, you know, he goes in the room and, uh, and uh, I mean, I'm hearing this, boy, you, you, you really beat him up. And I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, and uh, then I heard him something, well, yeah, did you see him sucker punch me? And I, and I thought to myself, how can you sucker punch a man? That's you know, two inches from your face, calling you a fat, no good, yeah. SOB, yeah. and take your best shot. And it's how impossible. Can you, how can you sucker punch a man that's looking you in the eye, telling you take your you're a fat son of a blank, and uh, take your best shot? Huh. So I slapped him. You know, I mean, he's looking me in the eye. Yeah. And um, um, then, so I, I heard that, and then I heard like everyone patting him on the back. You know, like boy, you really. You know, yeah. And then I walked into, I kicked open the door where the executives were, you know, the, uh, Eric wasn't there, but Shivani was there. And I, and I said, Paul, tell you what, you know, uh, uh, if, if you want to finish this fight, because I don't, you know, I haven't thrown a punch yet. Yeah. <laughs> and you've hit me three times with my hands on my side. And you know what? I'm still standing here. You haven't got the job done. Yeah. 
and um, I think at that point, if, if in other words, if um, if I hit you in the face three times with your hands on your side, yeah. and you're still standing, um, I had better be concerned because you know you obviously don't have the punch to get the job done. And uh, you know, I called him out. I said, "Let's go outside. Let's finish this." And he wouldn't come, you know, because you know. All right at that <laughs> point, <laughs> he wouldn't come. He wouldn't come, and. Uh, I finally got him to come, and, and as soon as he came, I blocked. I had him down. Hit. I you know I was gonna do him, and then Ming, who had went up to go get a hot dog, came over and saw it, and came over and grabbed me to stop me. And I said, you know, I explained it to later to Ming what had happened. He said, man, I, you know, um, that uh, had he known that, he you know he, he would not have broke it up because it was it was kind of my, yeah. my my turn to get you know yeah to get a little return, but. Uh, I, I think you know I have to take responsibility for for that because regardless of of his ignorance in terms of not knowing um, that uh, Eric uh, had had me go to the uh, to do the photo shoot, right? And even though he had totally mistreated me as, as you know one of the top guys in the company, and even if I had just been a enhancement guy, you don't treat people like that. Sure. Regardless of what he did, I have to take responsibility for for putting my hands on him, and and I certainly I paid a very dear price because I, again I had a long term deal for for substantial money, and it's yeah. it's it's cost me, and uh, um, um, you know um, I lost my train of thought there. You just talking about how you had a long term deal, and yeah, it cost you. Um, oh, um, I know where I want to go, you know, but, um, there, there were, you know, you know, there were some mitigating circumstances that the people don't understand because at the bash at the beach, I separated my chest. I, I, um, uh, popped my AC joint where they eventually moved two thirds of my AC joint mm -hmm. and I had a full th thickness, uh, rotator cuff tear. Um, uh, I took a bump and landed wrong on my shoulder, so I popped my shoulder and, and, and damaged my shoulder. So I told Eric, and uh, that you know I couldn't work, and he basically called me up and then and, and said no, that I had to, that I was the main event on the very next pay per view, doing a handicap match with uh, Flair and Arn. Flair and Arn. Yeah. I said, well, I really don't care. I mean, I mean, uh, yeah. Well. Well, you know, you got you got to do it. And I said, "Look, call Hogan, get someone to do it, because I can't do it. I mean, I can't. I, my chest separated, can't breathe. I can't lift my arm. I mean, my AC joints whacked out. I have full thickness rotator cuff tear. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And um, I called back. Said, "Look, just got to have you. Sorry." <laughs> and and I said, "Well, when this is over, then." Uh, uh, I'll come and you know I'm not going to do any house shows, but I'll come and do the TVs for the angles. For it. he said, okay, if I thought that was a fair compromise, you know. Yeah. And uh, it was ludicrous for me to be doing anything as injured as I was, because those are some serious injuries. Yeah. But uh, uh, I, I thought if I could get through that, and you know, I'm not saying that this caused me to start drinking because you know, anyone can tell you that I'll sit down and drink a beer. Right. Or two, or three, or four. But certainly, you know, this caused me to drink more for, for the pain, and I was taking pain pills. Yeah. So when Paul, you know, through his ignorance of not knowing that I had I had marching orders from the boss to go do the photo shoot, yeah. um, jumped on me, you know. Uh, sure, I have a temper, but I, I don't believe I would, I would have snapped like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, if I didn't have the chain pain from the chest and pain from the shoulder, and that I was, I mean, I was taking six, eight Percocets a day. Wow. To, to get through, I mean, just to sleep, I had to take two or three, and then uh, couldn't get a workout. I mean, I tried to go over and do 135, you know, and yeah. just to, couldn't do it. And uh, so, I mean, I was going through a lot of pain, and, and uh, that was, you know, uh, my my main argument with Eric and you know, the come on Eric, you knew I was hurting and you knew the kind of frame of mind I was in and and yes I was wrong for putting my hands on the man regardless of what he did. 
and regardless how he mistreated me. But, uh, um, you know, I, I believe uh, that there were certain individuals like, like Hulk Hogan and Rick Flair that saw an opportunity to, to get rid of Vader. Yeah. And, uh, here's the former top guy of the company that, that we have an opportunity to just get rid of. And uh, um, so. Part of the house cleaning for, on their part. Yeah, and, and you know, yeah. and, and I gave it to them, which really is really, you know, I gave them. Even the what door. they wanted. I, I gave them the, the open door and they slammed it. So, yeah, I, I take full responsibility for putting my, my hands on Paul. Yeah. But uh, uh, certainly, you know, uh, Paul should have acted that fashion. And, uh, uh, but, in, you know, in terms of, of this one on man that, that weighs. 100 pounds less than me the, that didn't happen and, and uh, at least it couldn't have been I don't know yeah I've got, I've got a lot older since then maybe it could <laughs> it sure didn't happen that 